Hello, gender inequality doesn't make sense at any level, but marginalizing the rights of women. We deny ourselves the opportunities of letting millions of men and women out of poverty, not to mention a chance of a fair world. From the girls and boys, women and men, play certain roles and behave in certain ways in the society based on the traditions, religions, and other beliefs. These behaviors are learned and shaped the ways and behaviors and the norms of the society. Unfortunately, in many countries, gender norms create disadvantages for women. Often, girls are not sent to school. When they become women, they then have limited ability to earn money or realize their potential. Now, rural women play a major role in agricultural development. Okay, however, in many developing countries, women cannot formally own land. Without land, they cannot get loans to invest in their farms or businesses. It also means they have no control over the use of land or the benefits that comes from land. Okay, men generally control the household uh, decisions that how to use the family's assets then the women are always disadvantaged. Then subcultural so beliefs can also restrict women opportunities, such as in parts of Africa, where women cannot paddle their boats as is considered an omen, considered a bad omen. The result of these issues, which is women remain poor and our cultural production cannot reach its potential, perpetual poverty and hunger in developing nations. Now, the social norms that limit women's opportunity need to be understood and then changed by taking a gender transformity to the pouch that we can now influence the social norms and bridge the gaps in access to resources and services between men and women. In the lasting manner, change is needed on many levels and both men and women must be involved for it to happen. Now, research and development organizations need to invest in programs that promote gender equality alongside improving productivity and incomes. Policies need to be implemented and increased access to services and resources. Communities need to support women as farmers and as leaders in increasing women's voice and agencies in a valuable end in its own right. When developing organizations, policies, and communities support success of women, we have a chance to reduce extreme poverty, increase prosperity for girls and boys, women and men around the world. Our next topic is on power. Power is the ability to make others to do what you want them to do. Okay? So it's the ability to make others to do what you want them to do. So every day of your life, you move to the systems of power that other people may. Do you understand power? Do you realize why it matters? How we often uncomfortably talk about it. That's true. In civic life, how we live together in the community, power is involved. Now, in a democracy or in democratic rule, power is supposed to reign or resign with the people. And in further talk about power, you really have, it seems like a little bit dirty or may even be evil. Yes, sometimes power is no more good in handling good or evil, but fire is just it. It governs out any form of governance. It determines who gets what and the rules of the game. So learning how power operates is key to being effective, being taken seriously, and not being taken advantage of. So in this lesson, we are going to look at where power comes from, its exercise, and what you can do to become more powerful in the public. So let's recap. We said that power is the ability to make others do what you would have them do. Of course, this plays out in all areas of our life, from family to work and to play. So we have physical and mental power. Power can be found in physical and mental areas. Then the other one is uh, social power. It's a form of power that is found in society within politics. Why physical power is used often during confrontation, social power can be found in laws, wealth, and fame. Yes, physical power, you always use them during conflict, but social power can be found in laws, in wealth, and in fame. The next topic is on democracy. Abraham Lincoln said that democracy is government of the people, by the people, and for the people. 
always like this and it has always experienced a long journey before becoming the way we know it today democracy let's travel in time to see how it all started the birth of the first democracy in the ancient greece yeah okay democracy means um town in the ancient greece it means town it was an idea that was passed long time ago by citizens in Athens, a city in the ancient Greece. It consisted of a government system where decisions were discussed and decided by citizens' assembly. The members of assembly were settled by raffle and decisions were agreed after majority vote in favor, but restricts the rights of, um, you have the women, and the slaves, they don't vote. They restrict the rights of women and slaves. Sometimes, after the Greek democratic idea traveled to Rome. Yes, from ancient Greece, it traveled to Rome. Now, in ancient Rome, they started to approve laws and chose their governors through citizens' assembly. Although, if you have to be part of this assembly, you have to be rich. You have to be rich. You have to be noble and very powerful, yes. You have to be rich, you have to be noble and be powerful to be part of this uh, citizen. The next one we're going to look at is uh, totalitarianism. These are forms of government, okay? Totalitarianism is a form of government. We have seen democracy. We've seen what power is all about. Now, totalitarianism is a system of government in which all the powers, a system of government in which the people have virtually no authority, and the state wields absolute control for example a dictatorship so a system of government where you have dictatorship okay that's totalitarianism everything is wielded in the central and the people have no much say unlike democracy narcissism is another form of uh, system of government okay narcissism uh, it took socialist idea of the community in applying on the nationalist scale the nazist party wanted to unify germany under a collective purpose okay the leader of the nazist party was adolf hitler that's the picture image of hitler there and he established the ideology of nazism nazis ideology can be defined in, in four parts okay you have expansion racial purity power militarianism okay so that each parts explain specific part of the philosophy of Nazism. Now, Hitler created a nationalist society party which puts Germany first. Thank you for watching this video and please do ensure to complete your assignment and upload properly. Please be good.